To finish up, we're just going to talk about uh, Kalman decomposition. And the Kalman decomposition is just a particular way um, to or it corresponds to a particular coordinate transformation of a state space model that reveals various interesting internal features of the model, especially when the system is not observable or not controllable or not observable or controllable. Um, so the setup for what we're going to talk about is just a normal state space model. I've put uh, tildes over the A, B, C and D variables. Just um, We're going to be writing more A, Bs and Cs and uh, the things we're going to be writing out here are going to be our state space model after we perform the coordinate transform. And I don't want these to be confused with the untransformed A, B, C, and D. But this is what we're studying, and we're going to introduce a particular coordinate transformation that reveals any um, unobservable and uncontrollable structures. So if... Uh, all systems have such a decomposition. We're not going to prove anything to do with this, I'm afraid. We're, you're just going to have to take my word for what I'm going to uh, tell you. But um, what, what this coordinate transform does is it puts a state space model on a very particular form. And in particular, after performing this coordinate transform uh, transformation, the a, B, I have, yeah, and C matrices take on a very particular form, and which I'll now fill out. So the the new A matrix has got this slightly uh, curious triangular structure. I need an A one three. And then here we've got A330, A43, A44. And it's got zeros everywhere else. So we've got this sort of block triangular structure. And then within each block, they also have a triangular structure. Um, and then the B matrix over here, we've got our input U and our B matrix split B1, B2, 0, 0, and our C matrix is split C1, 0, C2, 0. Um, and here we have our system state Z, and here we have the time derivative of our system state. And the interesting thing about this is it will, as we'll draw a little picture in a minute, is that the way that this partitions the state corresponds to which bits are observable and controllable, which bits are controllable but not observable, which bits are um, whatever I didn't say. Let's just start writing them out. So we have Z that is both controllable and observable. We have Z which is both which is controllable but not observable. I'll indicate not by drawing a line over it like that. Then we have Z, which is not controllable, but is observable. And then we have Z that is neither controllable nor observable. So this is just a coordinate transformation. So if X has got dimension N, this thing here, this has still got dimension N. All I'm doing is I'm just splitting the vector up into pieces that corresponds to the parts which are both controllable and observable, controllable, not observable, not controllable, observable, and neither. Um, and this is the Kalman decomposition. And all the Kalman decomposition says is that every state space model has such a decomposition. Um, and the interpretation of all of these different parts corresponds to this partitioning of the state. And this will become a bit clearer if we just draw a, like a picture indicating what's going on here. So we've got our input U, and now I'm just going to draw on a box for each of these pieces. So box, box, box. Let's have a summation. And let's have the output y. And here we've got z 
controllable and observable, Z controllable and not observable, Z not controllable and observable, and here's not controllable and not observable. Um, what, what we're going to do with this picture is we're just going to try and show what this sparsity pattern in the A matrix and the B and the C matrices is doing in terms of like what depends on what. So we see the input affects both the bit that's controllable and observable, so the first part, and also the next bit down. So our input affects both of these two states. How about um, the output? The output, so yeah, maybe, maybe we can even label on, we've got B1 and B2 here. The output is determined by the bit that's observable and yeah, well, all the bits that are observable. And so here we have C1 and C2. And how about the inter interdependence of the states? Well, we see that the bit that's controllable and observable, well, it depends on itself, but it also depends on the third element down, which is the not controllable but observable bit. So we have some dependence coming in like this, and this is our A13. And we can go ahead and start doing that for all of the other pieces, and you should probably check these for yourself. So here we have A23. So the controllable and not observable depends on the not controllable and observable. And so on A43. A two four and a two one. I think I got everything on now. Um, so what this picture is doing is it's illustrating the structure in this model here, and hopefully you can use this picture to understand why certain bits are controllable but not observable. Um, so how should we interpret this? Well, let's look at this one first. So controllable but not observable. We see the evolution of this part of the state. It depends on the input, and it depends on these three, well, all, all the other parts of the state. But we see it does not affect the output at all. And that's why this is the part of the state that is not observable. It's controllable because it can be affected by our input u. Um, but it's not observable because it doesn't appear in the output y. Similarly, the part that's not controllable and not obs uh, and observable, well, it appears in the output um, y, but there's no effect of the input u. You see, there's no path from the input that will change the value of this state. So whatever we choose for the input, it's not going to affect this part of the state. And this is just a result of the structure in these A, B, and C matrices. So I said this is the bit that's controllable and not observable. I said this is the bit that's not controllable and observable. That's It's true, but it's a consequence of the fact that this decomposition instills this pattern on the A matrix. And what this pattern does is it reveals the fact that we have this bit of our state, which the input doesn't affect at all, but it does appear in the output. And so this sort of adds a bit more intuition to why we say this part is not, or, or, to, or it adds a bit more intuition to these notions of um, controllability and observability as well. Um, so. Yeah, we have this decomposition that splits everything apart into these four pieces, um, and the way this split happens matches exactly with the definitions of observability and controllability that we gave before. So this is, if you like, one of the key consequences of those choices of definition and why they're the right choices, uh, if you like, um, because those choices, when 
viewed through this state transformation reveal the bits of your model which you can't affect, but do affect your output. The bits of your model that you can't see in your output, but you can affect. And also the bits in your model that you neither see nor can affect. Um, and so that, that's what the Kalman decomposition is. Um, some other little facts about this, I guess. Um, you get some very, if no, um, if there are no common eigenvalues between uh, the diagonal, the blocks on the diagonal, so blocks on diagonal. So if no eigenvalue in A1, A11 is also an eigenvalue of A22, then you get big simplifications. And in fact, if this is true, if so, if none of the diagonal blocks share eigenvalues, all of the off-diagonal blocks equal zero. And if that's the case, um, a whole bunch of these links just all, yeah, all these links disappear. And so you don't, things become even more decoupled in terms of what affects what. Um, and another interesting consequence that I encourage you to check for yourself is that um, C tilde SI minus A tilde inverse E tilde is equal to C1 SI minus A11 inverse B1. And actually, one way that you can check this is using the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. Um, and the way to do it is as follows. So we know th through the coordinate transformations that this must be equal to C SI minus A inverse B, where this is A, this is B, and this is C. Um, but now, can you argue why, uh, using the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, this inverse here must share the same sparsity structure as the A matrix here? So if a term is zero in the A matrix, it must be a zero in this inverse too. Um, and then you can use that to show why this is true just very, very quickly. Um, but the, the point of all of this is um, also that what this means is that the transfer function description of your model depends only on C1, A11, and B1. And so that means um, it depends only on the bit that's controllable and observable. And this is something that we mentioned before, and this is something that comes up in the study of poles of a system. Um, so we, we talked about how there's a dif difference between poles of a transfer function and the eigenvalues of an A matrix. And the difference is that you might have some things in the eigenvalues that correspond to pole zero cancellations. And in fact, what all of this tells us is that all of the unobservable and uncontrollable parts of a state space model, they correspond exactly to the parts that the, the pole zero cancellations that you get when you form the transfer function. So that's another uh, connection with all of this uh, controllable and observable things. If a model is controllable and observable, you get none of these cancellations, and the eigenvalues of your A matrix become the poles of your transfer function. Otherwise, the poles of your transfer function correspond to the eigenvalues of the controllable part of the model, and you don't see anything else um, in the transfer function. Um, but there you go, there's here's some stuff on the Kalman decomposition, um, and hopefully it uh, reinforces your belief in some of the more abstract definitions that we've seen um, through this lecture.